Hello everyone, welcome back to the Yegbusters DVD Commentary Part 3. This part will cover the episodes Super Mario 64 Redux, uh, Mega Man 2, Banjo-Kazooie, and the Ocarina of Time Redux. I think just those four, but we will see. Uh, this video was released on March 30th of 2013, which makes me 21 years old, if I'm remembering my birthday right. Uh... And this is what a 21-year-old looks like sometimes, if things don't go well. <laughs> okay, let's get going. Super Mario 64 Redux, ready, set, go. It's that time of the week again. It's that time of the week again, in a nice low voice. Because that's funny. If you just make your voice low, it's automatically funny, which is kind of true. Sort of like how fart jokes are... How oh, those are automatically funny sarcasm. But it's not sarcasm, they actually are. Yo, no, actually, here's something I forgot to tell you guys. So, Eggbusters went for a really long time after this. March 30th, 2013. And the last episode was... When was it? Probably in, like, what, September? September of 2016, so three and a half years or something like that. I don't honestly remember when the season finale was. It was probably in September. Um, and all through the time of doing it, after I stopped doing the coming up on Eggbusters, I wanted to actually bring that back. I was trying to remember every season, hey, this will be the season that I start to say, uh, coming up on Egg, hey, I took that picture. You see that picture that flashed? I took that picture. That was at a convention uh, that I went to in like 2011, I think, in Baltimore, Otakon. Man, look at how fast this is going. All these little jokes. The con I missed the conduit joke. I'm jumping all around. It's crazy. It's like tiring me out to watch it. But it's actually not too bad. Ah, uh, yes, this glitch. Man, this coffee that I've made is interesting tasting. Hmm. So the first, thing first time of, uh, this episode would be the first time where I would look at the comments and go, oh my god, I can't believe I didn't think of that, and then make a whole episode about it, and I did that a couple more times, where I would do an episode, someone would point something out that I should have done better, I'd say, oh my god, I can't believe I didn't think of that, so I'd make a redux to do it, and eventually I was like, oh my god, I would see a comment like this, and I'd say, oh my god, I can't believe I thought of that, oh well, and <laughs> i just never go back to it, because, um... It became clear that I was always going to forget something. There's no way that my brain was good enough to think about every possibility while the episode was actually going on. So I just stopped, uh, stopped trying to cover for all that stuff because um, the show very quickly became not actually about like well-researched glitch stuff. So it became about something more amazing. Because well-researched glitches are best left to other shows, but we've talked about that. Now I'm re-explaining. This is another thing I tried to start cutting out after I realized I did it. Is, uh, um, just re-explaining what I explained in the live portion over again. I started to become hyper-aware of the fact that I was doing that and trying to correct it. And I think that... Process is one of the reasons why I still like making YouTube videos. I'm dead. Is I make one and I think it's really good, and then I put it up, and then a week later I watch it and I go, Oh my god, this is not good. There's so much I want to change and make better, and then I can make it better, and the process continues. And then that going through and just improving it and improving it and improving it is the most fun thing about making YouTube videos. Um, and when I get to the point where I feel like, Okay, now I watch them and there's not anything that I really want to change or improve about it. Or you don't even have to call it improve because some people prefer this old style compared to what Eggbusters is now. Um, but once I get to that point where I watch something I made and I think, okay, this is about as good as it can be, I just don't necessarily care to keep making it for too much longer. Uh, and that's kind of what happened. I got to Eggbusters EX Season 1 and I was like, okay, this is pretty much where I want it to be. After three seasons of going through it and making these changes over and over again and just letting it evolve, I got to the point where I was like, okay, this is good. It's done. I, I did it. I figured it out. And so it was time to take a break from it. And uh, so that's what we're doing. We're taking a break from it. And instead we're doing a show about interviewing an idiot about how he's playing video games, like Paper Mario, and a show about 
eating snacks and trying to tell you about the 12-year-old girl who got sentenced to death by hanging. If you haven't watched More Junk Snacks, I certainly recommend it because you'll learn some crazy stuff. Crazy, true stories from history. Crazy, true stories from history. And what else are we doing? Musical messages? Well, there's only one of those. And there will be a new show still coming. Sort of the, it's not Negbusters replacement in that it's about glitches, because it's not about glitches. But it, it's a video game based show that um, will tickle some of the same humor things as Eggbusters, mixed with some of the stuff that we are discovering doing the sort of interview style. And, you know, that the, the show I'm doing now, it's going to sort of be a, it's a whole mishmash of things. It's going to be fun. I'm excited. It also is even going to have elements of. Um, I don't know how many people have watched it, and a lot of the episodes I've set to private because I think they're really bad. Um, maybe I'll make them public for patrons at least, because patrons I feel like I can trust to watch my shitty videos and not hate them and judge me, kind of. <laughs> Whereas normal people, it's kind of like, yeah, okay. We talked about this before, though, how the Twilight Princess video is like the the most popular one. So. I remember doing that where I nailed it right in the middle and I felt so good. That's your video moment. I don't know what that means. Maybe I meant to do like a replay and I never did. But I guess here's part of the reason why it was um, fun to do these early videos is because I didn't... So at the time I had gotten pretty good at... Obviously, using this program called Logic Pro X, which is how I make my music primarily. Um, and I did that just through trial and error. I just made so much music. I would make songs every single week for a couple of years. And I just learned that program. And I didn't know much about video editing programs. So this was all made in iMovie. And just learning the limits of iMovie and working within them was really fun. And then eventually, I upgraded to Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro X and had the same fun experience of like, oh, this is a new vehicle that I have to learn how to use, and that's really fun to me. So, yeah, should be a good time. Every time I get like a new, learn a new skill in Final Cut or in iMovie, as was the case, like when I learned that iMovie could sort of do green screen and I tried to do some green screen videos one time and they were horrible, they're all on private now, you can't watch them. Um, it's just so exciting to me when I discover a new, like, technical tool. Hey, I sweared. There you go. Nope, we're back. I do think there's a certain pacing that I'm starting to develop with Eggbusters at this point, which is, what, two months into it right now? A month and a half, two months into it, I'm starting to feel my way around pacing with the speed of the live sections and then kind of the mellow of the um, game sections. And then you start to feel, at least for me, I don't know, like, I, I sometimes think that I think of Egg Busters way differently than most people who do. Because when I think of Egg Busters, I... I do f think of it and feel it in like a, in the way you would think of a song kind of, fast sections, slow sections, and loud and whatever, and it's not something like you're watching it and you're like, oh my god, this is so fast, and oh, this is so slow, it just, it has a pacing to it, it's not like when you turn on, um, okay. I guess I can't say your average, but your average gaming YouTube video, and it is kind of just like, it starts, and then it's the same for 15 minutes, and then it stops, and that's kind of it, usually. Um, actually, if you take a look at these, you'll have to rewind it, but these titles, um, I'm starting to do more stuff like that as time, oh man, I feel like I remember, I might be wrong about this, but this has happened before, where I would do these title sections, and I was doing, um, I was doing them, hey, I spelled it all really, uh, really well out, uh, but since I was doing them on this old MacBook, it couldn't really handle them for some reason, like I said in one of the episodes, it was like the screen would go black, and I'd have to smack it and all that, um, but making titles was such a pain in the butt, and it still kind of is a pain in the butt, 
but I, you just get into the flow of it and you can do it faster as time goes on. So I remember making that and it took like 30 minutes and I was like, oh, 30 minutes is way too long to spend on it. Because I think I had that thing in my head of like, a YouTube video, you should just shit it out and it should exist. Because that's kind of how they mostly are, isn't it? Um, it's about just quickly snapshotting a genuine element of yourself and putting it up without much editing. And then I obviously gradually moved away from that because... I don't know, people have asked me this a lot. Um, and I don't answer it that often, but I said I would try to be 100% genuine and not avoid things just because I think it's dumb when I'm doing these commentaries, so I should answer it right now. Um, people ask me how long it takes to make an episode of Eggbusters. And these early ones, between filming and editing, might have taken five or six hours to do an episode. Not that long. As time's gone on, the average episode of Eggbusters EX Season 2 was closer to the 15 to 20 hour range. That might be a little on the high end. But like 10 to 15 hours, I guess, is probably a little bit average. So every week you're talking about you know, minimum 10 to 15 hours to put together an episode of the show. And, and that's not including all the pre-work of, like, making all the titles, which <laughs> my titles suck, so it's not that much. But I guess the music is a legit, you know, writing that credit song didn't wasn't quick, so. You know, it takes a good amount of time, and I think that that... I don't want to be afraid of taking my time just because... Yes, we did another glitch it. up here, didn't oh, we? Where we like walked up the side. Oh well. Up and fire. And you have to I don't remember what I was talking about. Oh yeah, so it's. I sometimes get afraid of putting in the work as as you land in this because I think it seems like it's really draining this. in a way. And man, it's weird how similar this what we're doing now is to that glitch that we did. Uh, more recently in Eggbusters EX. I think there was season two. So yeah, trying not to not be afraid of doing a lot of work. Because it can be scary because it's like, if I put in the minimal amount of work, I will probably get five to six thousand views on a video in its first couple of weeks. If I put in the maximum amount of work and stay up really late and really what? try and be creative and foster a lot of fun ideas, it'll probably get five to six thousand views. So it's like, what's really the point? And sometimes I, in Eggbusters especially, I want to say it was either season three or season two, which would be either the second or the third season. One of them, I, I remember just, it really did kind of turn into like an assembly line sort of where I wasn't... I just definitely wasn't actually thinking about it creatively and putting in work. Maybe we'll get to that. I don't know if I'm going to do any DVD commentaries beyond just season one, to be honest. But um, if we do, I can talk about that. Because there's a lot of interesting stuff that happened in my life and in my thoughts about Eggbusters in that in the next couple of seasons as a transition to Eggbusters EX. And then in Eggbusters EX, I started kind of having fun again. So... Yeah. And again, good times, just good times. Out there is this black void, and it's, it's just, there's something weird about it. Yeah, I'm getting a little philosophical, because it is interesting. Back out like a regular boy. I don't know if people agree, but one right, of the things well, that Eggbuster is sort of, like that one a lot. I don't know, it wouldn't say taught me, but kind of tickled in me, was the idea of, right, like, so what's the on black room feeling black at home in a place, but then seeing that place from another perspective, like we just uh, did. You, you feel at home in the castle, and you think of the castle in a certain way, and then when it's, you are shown the castle in a way that you're not used to, it's, uh, I've always compared it to if you live in your whole house, you know, for 18 years before you leave, or for, in my case, more than 18 years before I left, um, and then someone was like, oh, by the way, if you open this wall, there's just another room. It's like, what? Like you, And then you have to think of it differently. That feeling to me is really fun and interesting, and that's a, a way that I think I think about Eggbusters differently than other people, is I think of it all kind of... Um, a lot of typos in this, the titles. Oh man, that was a cool and excited. Thanks for watching, everybody! That was nice.
you want to hear my voice more than once a week, you can find our podcast called Here's a Podcast. Oh, yeah, the podcast. We don't do that podcast anymore. Uh, we stopped doing that podcast. We started doing a different podcast, and then we stopped doing that podcast. Yep. Sorry if you were a fan of the podcast. It's just really difficult to get it going. I want to, like I was saying, I don't want to be afraid to do the work for the podcast, and I sort of am. Hey, Friendster in MySpace. Wiggler Diggler. That's a little funny joke. MySpace.com slash Wiggler Diggler. If you go there, I don't know what you end up with. Um, but it's I just made it up, so that's what happened. Okay, this episode, Mega Man 2 episode, April 6th, 2013. Um, I don't think there's anything I need to say beforehand, so let's just get going. Ready, you go. This episode of Eggbusters brought to hey. you by Lego City Undercover. This episode of Eggbusters brought to you by... Good. I'm playing it right now. That was our first one. Why did I do it for Lego City Undercover? Things, but it's still pretty good. I think Coming I up on paid for that game, so I don't know why... I don't know why I would have promoted it. I think I still had, and I still do have a little bit in me of this, like, I want people to like... And because things that, like the Wii U, you know, only to the Twilight because the I'm like, oh, the Wii U's really it's awesome, it's Mega Man 2, you have to and like, Lego City on a Car is a fun game, and I was still kind of in that mode where I was wanting to evangelize it, which is fine, hey y'all, it's good, but uh, you realize it's actually just a silly thing to evangelize it, it doesn't actually do anything, so I, eventually I stopped, actually I started using it as a way to talk about games that nobody knows about but all right i'm gonna be quiet and actually listen for a minute just to get a sense of things and then i'll talk more we're not that's right the very first third party game we're ever going to be doing is one third from my childhood <laughs> mega man 2 i'm sure a lot of you played this as a kid and probably didn't ever beat it i didn't beat it till i was like 16 or something it took me a long time but after so many years of playing okay here's a couple of things that i've remembered now just by sort of paying attention um and this is i guess a tip in a way if you're going to do a show where you're going to talk and then cut and then talk, like, you know, cut every couple of sentences kind of like this, where I say something and then it cuts, very, it's a very YouTube thing to do. Um, I, you rapidly learn that you want to make sure between each cut, you're in a sufficiently different part of the frame where it actually moves. Because if you are in the exact same place and then you cut, it looks kind of, it almost, it looks more like a mistake instead of deliberate. And so you can see I'm moving between each cut and that was deliberate between the, oh my God, what the hell happened? Just kind of, let's find a bang. Let's find out bang. Just right into it. Um, so yeah, it was one of the little things. And then gradually I realized I didn't actually care if it looked like a mistake and I thought it was kind of nice when things look like they're mistakes. So, yeah. I just so left them. To to. It's right, really hard to tell what kind of mistakes are good right? mistakes and which kind of mistakes are bad mistakes, though. Yes. Because no, 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 no it's down here. It's this one. I believe it's this one. So the glitch uses this. Sorry, I got distracted by my own well talking in my own ear. So yeah, it's um. um but if you, you know, YouTube start, right now also sort of has this start, philosophy. There's a lot of start, interesting start, things about start, how YouTube videos are made. Travel and how they've ended up, like what most of them are like. And they're in a lot of the same realm as um, less iconic kind of pop music, where it's it's mostly about making sure there are no mistakes, making sure it's very clean and very well lit, and it always sounds right, and everything is perfectly level, and there's no awkward moments or bad edits or anything like that. It's very clean. And that's kind of what I was still going for at this point, because it's really, I found it really easy and enjoyable to kind of go through and say, this was not clean, let's clean that up. This was not clean, let's clean that up. Um, it's a cut and dry way of making something that is, lets you do it very clinically. And this applies, I don't know what your art is, you listening, and if you don't have one, you, you should maybe have one. But whether it's like an engineering type thing, well, engineering is a little bit different, actually. Um, but whatever your art sort of is, between movies, music, making a game, making videos, um, TV shows, writing a book, um, painting, you don't really want it to be super clinical, I don't think. You don't want it to be perfectly clean and perfectly good looking. I mean, maybe you do, but I, I don't like that as much. Um, because, okay, the thing that kind of convinced me that I needed to stop being so anal about 
once more. I mean, there's a lot of things, I guess. Oh, what, so one of my other jobs that I do, I make YouTube okay. videos, Back and I do, you know, I do music commissions, I and but I also do, I mix bands, like music mixing. So I take bands, the recordings, and I mix them to sound good. And I was so clinical about it for such a long time that I realized it all sounded good, but it didn't sound as interesting as it could have. Like, for example, um, what's a good example of this? Okay, I did a stupid glitch. I'm not even thinking about it. Um, party tricks, mentioning that again. One Mario Kart which we did. I guess I was. More I'm gonna have to think about this. Oh, okay. So. So it goes upon occasion. This is not the uh, best example that I can think of in the world. Party trick and, uh, but I, hey, I died. Um, if you watch the original Star Wars, there's a part where Princess Leia says, "Into the garbage chute, okay, fly boy," and the one, microphone. Something gets weirdly messed up with the audio, and it gets all kind of grainy and like weirdly boosted and fuzzy when she says, Into the garbage, you fly boy. And when you're watching it, there's this weird graininess, and it's like it doesn't really matter, but you're kind of like, Oh, that felt like weird and almost a little out of place in a way. Um, but I also heard some rumblings that this can and it, it's just a thing, it just sticks out to you. It's not good or bad, it just sticks out. It sticks in your mind. Oh, I remember how this part goes. Into the garbage, you fly boy, and it sounds all weird. There's something about that kind of stuff that's cool. Like those those mistakes that don't detract and don't add. They just are there, and you can remember them because they're different. I think that's kind of neat. It happens in music a lot, too, and I can't necessarily remember... Um, you need to get any good examples right this moment I'm sorry, you need to get but little mistakes and things like there are times when you'll listen to like a Nirvana song and it's a recorded version of a song and then like the words are just wrong or I don't know there's other kinds of mistakes that are good to keep in but the point is you don't want to cut out every mistake and it's really hard to tell in the moment which mistakes are the ones you want to keep and which ones aren't and you maybe start to get a feel for it, sort of, but honestly, you can't tell until after the fact. And I don't think as the artist you can actually tell at all in general. You just have to leave some in and trust that they're okay. And maybe there is no mistakes that are bad to leave in. It's just an amount. Like, you don't want too many, but you want a few. Just in order for it to sort of stand out. There's weird things. Weird things. Typos. Um, the stormtrooper whacking his head in the first Star Wars. You just don't want it to be clinical. You don't want everything to sound and look flawless. Sort of. Even though that's a thing, and it's okay to do that. But it just... I don't know. It lacks a little bit of depth, and I don't know why. I mean, I could probably explain why, but I'm going to start having to ramble to sort of find my way through that, and I don't really want to, so... I got to sneeze. <coughs> oh, so then the other thing I wanted to say about this glitch, aside from real... Hey, I did it. Freaking out. Um... Aside from Someone realizing that I was being very clinical and making sure all the cuts looked good and all that. So aside from that, this was also an episode that was shared by this excellent human being named Jonathan Holmes who works slash worked, I'm not sure, for Destructoid. And he does this podcast called Sup Holmes. Just like a kind, such a kind man um, who's got a good sense of self and a good sense of that this is like how he wants to make his art, and I really like that. And um, but he shared this episode, okay. the Mega Man 2 episode, so the, on Twitter with his followers, and I was so like thrilled that, sort of, some that somebody with a certain amount of political sway in the games industry thought it was good. It meant a lot to me at the time it still means a lot to me but not because of his political sway just because i i like him as a person his opinion means a lot that he enjoyed this at the time and i don't know if he still enjoys eggbusters at all I, i'm assuming he didn't keep watching it because it's really hard to continue watching something for years on end when it doesn't stop for a while i should talk more about that later too um 
Another thing that's annoying about YouTube shows. Stop. Airman. Jesus, man. Stop. Perfect. That's the one we want. Don't kill me. He's going to kill you. Oh, good. They all freeze. That's interesting. No, they don't. They only freeze when you're in the air. Ah, give me that one. Just give it to him. This gets a little bit humorous. This, right, It's fine. sort of like no, one of the no, things that the Eggbusters thing is got. good for. Um, <gasps> yes, on the last try. Like yes. just watching me fail yes. and complain yeah, about it. I think I got funnier complaining about it as time went on. Because it was less just, uh, uh, oh my god, uh, and it became... I would rant with the same angry energy, but I would start to say the most absurd things, and I don't even know. When I watch me do that, I don't even, I can't even, I don't even feel like it's me doing it. I don't know who that person is that is saying those ridiculous things. But whatever. Good job. You did it, buddy. Um, okay, so the thing I was this is such an interesting tasting coffee. To see, I'm, I'm I mean, I don't the, the like it, but I don't think I would just like how coffee before. tastes in general. I just drink it because it's a drug that uh, helps call? me uh, go uh, nuts. No, there's some videos coming up on two people playing games. Uh, we do, I don't know if you guys know this, but two people playing games, we used to just do Let's Plays, and now we're starting to branch out. We do the main Let's Play, and then we have these sort of one-off videos. A little bit more Game Grumpsy, but every Sunday we have a live-action video. And we got this one coming up uh, where we're like decorating pumpkins, fake pumpkins, I should I. And I have had a lot of coffee that day, so you can see I'm going a little nuts with, uh, with the coffee. It's interesting, I'm watching this Mega Man 2 episode now, and it's so obvious to me where I can jump and where I can't. Whoa, I'm standing oh, outside. never mind. No, it's not. I thought it was. But it's obvious that it's just a level with the wrong tile set. Like, I know that now, and back then I didn't necessarily realize it. Um, so you might think I'm sort of a glitch expert at this point, doing so many glitches. But I've actually tried to actively avoid learning too much about the technicals, because I find them fascinating. But the mysticism of not knowing... Dead. What okay. is going okay. on is cooler than yeah. just knowing, oh, this, it swapped out the tile set and now we're in this level. Blah, blah, blah. Just not the, yeah, the no, mystery, no, mystery no, of it no, is so fun to me. Ways, as opposed to the obsessive <laughs> desire to gather knowledge. <sighs> Alright, so at the end of the day, that's, that one's absolutely completely confirmed and it's super cool. Um, if you have, it's super you cool. Have, I guess, if you had like a game genie. And you were playing with, uh, playing this on Reddit, I do have a Game Genie, actually. Here's a little behind-the-scenes fact. This episode for Eggbus is EX Season 2, I had a couple things planned that I didn't actually end up getting to. One of which is that thing I promised a million years ago, where I would just do all of the old Mew rumors that don't work, just to do them and see, because some of them were really crazy. And then the other one was I wanted to do sort of a Game Genie special, because I've got a Game Genie, and it'd be fun just to go through games and try some crazy codes out, see what we can do. And I never did either of those things, because I realized if you want to do an episode that takes 15 or 20 hours um, to edit and to film, you can't really do an episode that re would require an additional 15 to 20 hours just to play the game enough to get to all the parts to do the glitches, which is a big reason that Eggbusters became a lot of trouble as time went on. Um, it's just... Getting to the parts in the games that I needed to would just take so many hours and hours and hours that it was just, it was so frustrating. And I was like ruining games that I wanted to enjoy by having to play them in these really eggbusters ways. And it was just kind of eh. So I had to take a break. I had to take a break. Don't, what did I say? Do Don't fucking want. make a stupid, oh, like a sex joke. And then we'll, be fine. well, I still didn't like sex jokes. Hey, there's finally an end card. Which is sort of like a so credits thing. Be like, I can't do it, Mom. This game sucks. Buy me a new one. I never said that. I said, I can't do it, Mom. I'm going to play DuckTales. I never played DuckTales. I said, I can't do it, Mom. I'm going to play Super Mario Bros. 3. And then I lost at that game, too. Yeah, it's a funny little, funny little thing. Um... Anyway, okay, we're on to the next episode. 
So this episode, this Banjo Kazooie episode, is momentous for a lot of reasons, but it's especially momentous because it was the first time we had Aisha on the show. And I don't remember if this is when we began the rumor that she was my mommy or not, but we're gonna find out. So let's uh, let's do it. I'm gonna read some of the comments actually really quick. Bum Bum says, feels awkward. K Dog says, Isha, you're cool. I like you. Well, there you go. Let's this watch is, it. This go. Is brought to you by Rise of the Guardians on 3DS. It's pretty bad. Rise Coming of the Guardians on, on 3DS. That was funny. Guest, one of the best 3D that was funny because it was really bad. It's funny because I, it was like a brought to you by a bad game. Hey, Grant Kirkhope, I interviewed him. He's a lovely man. These are two glitches you'll probably want to see for yourself. As always, please try all of the things you're about to see at home. All right. I do not remember the day that I asked Aisha to be on Eggbusters at all. I have no recollection of filming this episode, I don't think. Maybe something will come back to me. But as usual, I'm going to be a little quiet at the beginning to see if any memories flood into my cerebral cortex. Why is that doubled? There was a reason for that, I can't remember. Oh, there she is. Who doesn't like Banjo Kazooie? The three D platformer was in its Look at her hair's on that so it's it cool. Launched. I'm not entirely sure if it did launch in nineteen ninety eight, but we're gonna go with that because I don't wanna look it up. Okay. Okay. So this week we're taking on the exploration platformer classic with a special guest from two people playing games fame. Hey, two people playing games fame. Kind of uh, embarrassment almost. Two people playing games fame. At least I was admitting that two people playing games was embarrassing. Me because I have a feeling these glitches are going to get rather frustrating in the long run. Yep. Glitch number one takes place in I haven't let her say a single word. Man Monster Man. There it is. It the internet claims that, that was funny. you can jump off the roof of one of the houses in Mad Monster Mansion and use a series of weird attack things and get over the outside fence and get somewhere. It's sort of similar, actually. I like this so face that I just making right now. She's just like, I'm going to fall asleep right now because this show sucks. Not exactly sure well, she's not wrong. Do once you get outside the gates, but we're going to figure it out. What was that flash? I know what it was. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the next episode of Egg I used to add a lot of little flashes in, and those were something... I know I've talked about this before a little bit, about following the art, but those were something that started as a technical mishap, where certain frames would get left in on accident, and it would flash really quick, and then I just started doing it deliberately. And that's what a lot of Eggbusters was. I can barely hear Aisha. Man, listen to... Um, this is really interesting to me, because this was the first post Eggbusters thing Aisha and I filmed together. Is it right here? And this must be it, isn't it? Here, wait, wait. If you listen to this and our dynamic versus the dynamic of two people playing games now, we are so much more affable now and natural that it makes me really happy to watch this and know where we are at more now. Because two people playing games now is like, we just talk and talk and talk and laugh and answer questions and have a good time. And it's not, generally not forced at all, and that's really awesome. So it's really cool that we've kind of come back, or we've come so far from this. And, I mean, by the time we started to be playing games, for some reason, I think it's because we were streaming a whole bunch. Uh, and we sort of got used to it. Used to the whole talking thing, but... Um, yeah, I'm really right, that was makes me really pleased with how to be playing games is going overall. Hmm. Almost. Hey, we did it. Nice. Good job. There's an energy to it. Is that that little tapping? Is that real? Eh, it's gone. Very nice. We're getting good at it. Um. I like how he walks like that. Yeah, this glitch I remember has a funny little bit. Because Banjo falls and he twists around a whole lot. The only one I, we did another Banjo Kazooie episode at some point that I remember because it it was one of the glitches that I should just did before we actually started, and that was a funny little moment. Um, but yeah, I can't say I remember actually the specifics of filming this. But maybe if I listen a little bit, I'm gonna shut up and give it a little listen. rendered on one side. Make it ow. Ow. That was hard. Yeah, I just hit my elbow bone. Oh, wait, I was like, elbows don't have bones. <laughs> uh, uh, wow. 
Well, that's a, if you watch two people playing games, that's a common noise. We don't, uh... Because you can't see the fence anymore, and that's the tricky part. We haven't, uh, shied away from making silly noises. But even now, Aisha sounds so much more natural than I do. Like, it doesn't sound like she's trying to say things, so, I don't know. And then there was this. This is what I was talking about. We were having a good time. Oh laughing and hooting and hollering. Being funny. Wow, being affable. But really not actually saying anything. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, I don't think we are saying anything with our words that the video is not saying on its own. You can't even really tell that they're the bottom of the trees because of the bad compression from iMovie. Jump down and see if I can go through that wall. Oh well. That was the best thing about transitioning from iMovie is fixing that. But I remember the very first episode with Final Cut was the Sonic the Hedgehog 2 episode because I was able to start doing keyframes and moving images around. Yep, look at that. Right and you go through. And then you're back. That was a fun, fun moment. Definitely a cool one though. Okay, so I think at the end of the day, that's like a good, yeah, that's, that's a really good one to do. Uh, but the guy who said feels awkward isn't entirely wrong. It feels maybe a little, a little awkward. But I don't remember what the second glitch on this one was. I mean, we did a lot of Benjo Kazooie episodes, and there was a bonus Benjo Kazooie episode too that showed up after the end of a season. I don't remember what season that was. But um, not wood. That's true. In an online video, it shows that if you And now, okay, good. I'm glad I was actually letting her say something. Because I, I seem like an asshole. Just being like, oh, let me talk, woman, kind of. <laughs> it kind of has that vibe, even if it's not intentional. Now, in Click Clock Wood, there are four seasons that you can play the level in. Normally, you're not supposed to be able to break Naughty's Boulder unless it's summer. Oh, it's this glitch. This causes a bunch of crazy This glitch is... Banjo-Kazooie gave Aisha and I so much trouble. And it all started with this very first episode. Um... Trying to break this boulder, everybody swore it worked. And we did it so many times for so many hours, and we could not get it to work no matter what. And we did it right, we did it all the ways, all the suggestions people said, we revisited it, and then we, we couldn't get it to work. But, the even, the even, um, the more frustrating glitch than this one was the Bumblebee one, where you can do the glitch to make it so you can play as the Bumblebee outside of Click Clock Wood. You can go into other levels as a bumblebee, and which would be so cool. And I still want to go back and do that glitch someday whenever Eggbusters returns. If it returns, it'll probably return. You can't leave no one. You, it would have a soft reboot at some point. You can't leave anything dead for too long. Um, but yeah. Stuff. I lost track of myself because I started listening to myself again. It's really a good thing to have ADHD and try to talk while you are also talking in your own brain at the same time. It's a good. It's a good thing. Man, Banjo Kazooie's awesome. Even though it's really not awesome, actually, when you're playing it, just the music and the atmosphere is really great. Maybe it's better. I don't know. Who watches two people playing games? Because we did a banjo playthrough. Sort of. And it wasn't very fun. That's what we're doing. Scary. I don't know what happened. It just wasn't that fun. Like maybe about here. And what will happen if it works, this weird sort of mini cutscene will play, and then we'll know that it worked, and then we can go left. Oh man, and we were trying to line it all up and get the eggs down there and blah 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 blah. See what I was saying about fart jokes. Fart jokes are always funny. Even though I didn't laugh. But I didn't laugh because I'm tired and I don't have any energy for smiles anymore in my life. That's different. Man, we did so many different things to try and get this to work. Hey, you know that cheat? Is it unlimited eggs or 99 eggs or what? We might want to do that actually. And then we left. Oh! So here's something that happens a lot in Eggbusters that is amazingly frustrating. A lot of times, something would happen in the middle of a glitch where I would have to go change something. Type in a type in a glitch code like or a cheat code like I did in this. Unlock something, get a new weapon or item or whatever. Um, 
And it would, I would just have these like three hours of footage of me having to do this thing that I would just have to delete. Had no value, you which know, in one sense is annoying. In the way future, as what am I saying? wants to watch this <laughs> except the sad thing is some people probably would yeah. it is sad but you it's freaks just, it's because i can't i don't have the energy to keep commentating for so many commentating hours commenting about just nothing nothing is happening at all hey tell me who you paired up all your characters with in fire emblem so far who are you who it's are this so this is um you want me to do it <laughs> something that happens um hey that is a face that's really scary face i said the exact same thing as i said at the same time um starting to talk about not uh, things that weren't actually what was going on i think that i think that was fun just hey let's talk about leafy or fire emblem well the, the talking about leafy was sort of a different i can't see this being that was funny for a different reason but at least i think it was but not just right, talking so about the glitch was something. Breaks, um, should, the break? Hey, we did no, do an Angbusters no. mini episode. Oh, I, you guys aren't going to be able to see that, I don't think. There's an annotation that popped up right now that says, People are telling me how we were wrong. Perhaps an Eggbusters mini episode is in order. And we did end up doing an Eggbusters mini episode. But it still didn't work. We still haven't gotten it to work. Well, I'll do it and we'll I was it talking about something, wasn't I? Oh, like wrong. rambling in Eggbusters. Some of my favorite moments, in fact, all of my favorite moments in Eggbusters are rambles, like just uh, strange comments or non sequiturs that don't make any sense, but you're like, how did, did he think of that? And even when I watched it, I'm like, how did he think of that? Not how did I think of that. How did he think of that? Because I don't see even the ones I make now. When I watch them, it doesn't really look like me. And I think that's a common thing when you make videos. You're kind of like, what? Um, Austin's lovely voice. Check out his podcast on NintendoEverything.com. Thank you. If there's anything else you want to say, the comments is the place to do it. And, this is weird. Um, have a good day. Oh, be nice to each other. Oh, we didn't say mom, by the way. We just said Aisha. There you go. Why did the mom thing come up? Well, we'll talk more about that later when that episode actually comes up. I don't think that was till the next season, though. Hey, credits. This is a good credit song too. Simple, but good. So this was the first one where there was a credit song. That makes me happy. Bum 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 bum. So good. It's a uh, simple, but it's good. It's a simple one, but it's a goodie. Simple, but a goodie, whatever, whatever. Okay, I'm gonna pee, and then I will come back, and we will do the last episode of the session, which is Ocarina of Time Redux. Time to pee, time to pee. Open the door, go into the bathroom. Oh boy. Okay, I have returned. So this was uploaded on April 21st, 2013. And the top comment is... Oh, there aren't any. No good comments. This is so weed, guys. Okay, are you 12? Maybe. Okay. Well, let's just do it. Ready, set, go. This episode of Eggbusters is brought to you by Fire, Fire Emblem Awakening. Fire, Fire Emblem Awakening. It's really fucking good. I remember saying that. I remember the exact cadence of it. This is my cool guy jacket, because I pop the collar up. And this is an interesting thing. Um, because I think when I did it and I put it on, I was like, this is really cool. But it actually is just kind of cringy, but in a way that still works, because it's like I'm self-aware of the cringy, even though I definitely wasn't at the time. Kind of interesting how that happened. Whereas now, anytime I do something cringy, I'm like, oh, that's really cringy. Let's put it in there for sure. Ah, and my red hands. Here's a fun fact. If you don't like how something looks, just put a really crazy filter on it. Man, I wish we were doing one of the later episodes of Eggbusters, because the Eggbusters Resident Evil 4 episode 
has a, such a funny thing in it, and I want to talk about it, but I think it's best if we save it for that. Um, but just such a funny editing thing with that one, and it's just, and I do stuff like that a lot, where I'm like, oh, this looks really dumb, let's just put a funny filter on it to distract people. And that, then people are like, wait, what's going on? Is it broken? It's like, no, Austin just didn't like how it looked, so he fucked it up. That's a good, good rule. That's like what bands do if they're like, this sounds really bad. Let's just like put a crazy filter on it and then it kind of sounds good now. It's interesting. I don't mean to talk about music a lot. I just really enjoy music and I make music. So I guess it makes sense that I would do that. I mean, everybody likes the Eggbusters EX Season 2 credit song. Though recently, I think I saw a comment where someone said, I miss the old credit song, which doesn't make any sense to me because that new credit song is Wet Hot Fire as far as I'm concerned. So we have to take the iron boots, put on the blue Wet hot and fire. And go down here and it says, if we go into I would listen, like I still listen to that song sometimes. The same thing happens with music where I make music. I don't, maybe, okay. If you're watching this, you probably make some sort of art, right? I, either you make some sort of art or you like Eggbusters way too much. When you make art, after it's done, do you like view the art, experience the art you made, and kind of feel like you don't know how you made it? It just kind of exists, and it doesn't even feel like you made it. It just feels like it existed, and then you were like, I'm going to take the thing that... I always get stuffed up when I talk for too long. Um, I'm going to take the thing that exists and just translate it into real world so people can see it. Um, which isn't necessarily how Eggbusters always was, but there's a certain sense of like, especially when I make a song, it's almost like the song already sort of existed, or the episode of Eggbusters already sort of existed, and I was able to see it because I've trained my brain to see the mist magic of Eggbusters in the universe. And but but other people can't see it, so if someone has to translate the episode that exists cosmically into a terrestrially uh, digestible form, which comes out through YouTube. So it's sort of like it exists, and I just like was showing it to you, sort of. It's not like I made it; I'm just showing it to you. And a lot of the time, that's how I feel, especially about music. That's how it feels, and I'm curious if other people who make things feel similarly. Because I know some of you are really good artists and really just astonishingly talented, wonderful individuals. I've seen the things you do. I look at your Twitter accounts a lot. Um, people who tweet at me, if you just have like an interesting profile picture or an interesting name or you said something interesting, I click and kind of scroll through and see what you're up to. And so many of you are just like so unbelievably talented and interesting. I mean, all of you are uh, it's interesting. It's just in different ways. I, and I haven't looked at all of you yet. I will, though. I will. Um, and I guess so I'm curious if anyone else is, like, thinks of it that way. Because I know some people do. I've heard people express that sentiment before. Like, they are... Not, people express it religiously a lot of the time. Like, oh, God is speaking through me. And I don't really think of it like that so much. Because I think we all scientifically know that we are creating, like I am creating Eggbusters out of my mind. Well, but in a way, I'm not really, because the thing that's creating Eggbusters is really just my brain. And my brain is made a way, the universe made my brain the way it was. I didn't make it that way. But I don't know. I'm not going to go down that path, because every time I try to explain things, I sound like a freaking idiot. You can tell I'm drinking coffee because I'm starting to talk about those kinds of things. Things that I care deeply about because I think they're really wonderful as ideas, as, as guiding principles, oh God, even if they're not literally owl? true. It wasn't an owl, it was a wolf, you idiot. It was just a wolf under the water. Oh and there's the God, sun. sun. That's really cool. Eggbusters is pretty neat, That's isn't it? So weird. Yeah, it is. Go down, Link. Down you go. We're under. You can see at the top of the screen. Man, that's so there. cool. Does it? Uh, where does the sun go when it gets to the bottom? That's yeah, that's what I was just bottom. wondering. Where does the sun go when it gets to the bottom? We're gonna find oh, out. God, so weird. No, it just and goes over. Just goes that's so interesting. Just, all right, Link, you're getting kind of far away here. That is really, really interesting. That's that. So weird. I'm gonna swim towards the sun. 
Look, Link in the Sun. And we're gonna go this way. <laughs> Link in the Sun. It sounded like it was meant to be a pun, but it definitely isn't. Unless it was like LinkedIn the Sun. Like LinkedIn is my son. MySpace is my daughter. Friendster is my dad. Something like that. And nothing's happening. And the game is beautiful. Oh, Link's falling. Where'd he go? Where is he? Can't see him on the He's dying. There he goes. Adios, amigo Link. Adios. Okay, well that was weird. So if you basically you see this line I'm standing on, if you just kind of This is an easy glitch. Easy peasy. These episodes, maybe the new episodes feel long. I'd have to get to them, but I feel like some of these episodes drag a little bit. And maybe it's just because I'm trying to talk during them and trying to get done with it. But I do have a sense of like, okay, we get it. But maybe it's also because I know what they are gonna like. I already did all these glitches. So I, the I don't know. Oh well. It's also not as interesting when it's not in like a random glitch. Like we did some like the pilot wings glitch. Is one still one of my favorite episodes. I think. Just a totally random, off the wall. Only one person has ever done a glitch that you're trying to confirm. Those to me are more interesting than ones that are from a wiki. And I didn't even start doing the random glitches until recently, which is too bad. Oh well. I think it was because I was afraid of doing the work, really. It's like, I could do this totally random glitch, but then I would have to do a lot of work for not that much gain. And at some point, you just have to not so much stop thinking like that just as much and just do a lot of work for less gain because you shouldn't even think about the gain necessarily you Which know what i mean you should just do more work because it's like oh then it's more work that's good in a way if it's making the episode better as opposed to thinking well hours to money this is not worth it. Because if you want a job that's hours to money worth it, don't do YouTube. Because if you can get up to the level that I'm at, which is 35,000 subscribers, which patently is a lot of subscribers, this is a lot of peoples. Uh, I put up an episode that I put, you know, 20-ish hours into. Usually, even the most popular episodes... Say one that gets 10,000 views in the first couple of weeks. Um, I get approximately $20 for it, which works out to about $1 an hour. <laughs> so I do not recommend YouTube as a career choice unless you are really into making the videos and not into having money. Though Patreon really does help with that because it does let me focus on making the videos without having to worry as much about hours put in versus money gotten out of it. So if you're supporting me on Patreon, I really can't thank you enough. And I hope you feel like you're getting your money's worth. And if not, please put a post on Patreon and say, Austin, this isn't good enough for me. I, this is what I want. Because I'm totally, especially if you're one of the people who is supporting on Patreon, I'm totally open to seeing what you guys have to say about what I'm doing with the channel. Um, because you guys are the ones making it possible for me to entertain you, and that's a big goal of mine. I don't want to self-indulge and just make something that only I would like. I want to make something that I like, but I also want you guys to like it to an extent, you know what I mean? As long as you're not going to ask me to make a porn, because porn, all the porns I've made are for private consumption only. Uh, I masturbate to myself. Masturbating. That's really weird, a thing to say. Hmm. Well, maybe we shouldn't have said that, Austin. Oh, this glitch was so awesome. I want to go back and do this freaking glitch again. I tried to do one like it, didn't I? Sort of recently. And it just wasn't as good. It was like a Song of Storms thing or something. Uh, but this glitch is... Definitely an iconic one, and it's interesting because if you read the description of this episode, I think it says something like, this episode sucks, oh well. And I really did think this episode sucked when I put it up. I don't remember why. Well, maybe, let me listen for a little bit and see if I can figure out why I thought it sucked. Oh, it made it a little bit red. Hmm. And it's black again. I'm wondering if it's just because... Why would it? Why would have I? Would I have thought this episode sucked? Maybe it might have been one of those cases where I was editing it and it didn't flow really well, 
So I felt like I had to do a lot of things like pointing out the minimap and explaining what Dins Fire does because I didn't vocally explain those things. And it's a lot easier if I can remember to vocally explain things so I can just edit it together and it'll uh, flow a lot more smoothly. Um, maybe that's why I thought it sucked. It's because I, you know, it wasn't... Oh, that's really scary. It sucked me up. And it covered me up. I'm going back to Kakariko Field. Kakariko Field. Ugh. Oh, everything's regular here. No, nothing strange. All right, let's go back and see what happens. But on the other hand, if you do make an episode of something that you do a oh, stretch, you do a poor job, like, you know, pointing out, you do a poor job of explaining what's going on, and so you have to do a lot of these bonus things to explain it. Um, sometimes that leads to some really interesting things. So, again, if you're willing to put in the work to take something bad and make it good in post, Usually people say, don't just fix things in post, make them good in whatever not post or pre is, just production. But sometimes if you make something b that's bad in pre-production slash production production, and then fix it in post, it gives it a certain flavor that's kind of interesting. So I don't, kind of like the Star Wars prequel thing. Star Wars prequel's not very good, but they are definitely interesting, and you can't get that vibe from a movie unless you make it really crappy and then try to fix it so i don't know what was that okay oh and then the guy pops out at us yep hello is it like the end of the fourth harry potter movie what was at the end of that movie the, the maze am i explaining that it's the maze yeah her butt her a pony a pony butt a pony could use a bidet and like, see, we're gonna do it, race. And I had to explain what it was because I didn't explain it vocally. I think that's probably why I thought the episode sucked because there's a lot of moments like that that I had to go and uh, sort of correct for. But the glitch is great. It's an excellent glitch. There are definitely just massive possibilities with this one also. Um, you could go to Kokiri Village, which we didn't do, but... Kokiri Village? Is that what it's called? Isn't it just so the Kokiri Forest? The I guess it is a village. It's a tree Valley. village. A village of tree people. Why didn't... See, that's the thing, though. It's like I'm sitting here saying there's so many things you could do with this. Why didn't I just do them? Because I was afraid to do the work. And it's always better to focus on... Because I think I'm afraid to do the work because I'm thinking in the future. Like, oh, if I do the work, it's going to take this time and that's going to make in the future, that's going to make it hard for me, as opposed to just focusing on the now. And usually if you just focus on the now, it works out okay. Eggbusters is very meditative to make Eggbusters. You learn a lot about yourself to make art, and that's why I think everyone should make some kind of art. If you've never made art before, some kind of art, you should make some kind of art. And don't be afraid to do the work, and do a lot of work, and make it as good as you can make it. And it might not be very good, but you'll get better, because I wasn't very good at first either. So that's life. But if you make some cool art that you've never made before, show it to me. And show it to your friends. Or don't show it to anyone, but just have it exist, because you'll learn about yourself through making art. That's how I feel about art, so. Alright, how many minutes did we do? Oh, a little over an hour, so that makes it, uh, well, I recorded a little over an hour, but I've got to edit a couple of chunks out, like when I went to the bathroom, so. In any way, any case, that's, uh, no, we're a little under an hour? No, a little over an hour. A little over an hour, okay. And that's it for part three of the Eggbusters commentary. Part four will, man, one, two, three, four, five, six episodes left, plus the bonus, so I guess it's going to be, it looks like five parts to get through. Um, to get through the first season so we'll have two more parts of this sometime in the future hopefully either way have a nice time everybody I hope you learned something about yourself or something enjoyable from listening to me talk about making egg busters and if you didn't don't watch any more of this stinking thing have a good week I'll see you later